Hello, my name is Shahyar Shahyari, and this is a lecture in a series of lectures on introductory undergraduate linear algebra based on my book, Retrolinear. The subject of this lecture, the title of this lecture is one or two vector spaces the same. And uh, this is going to be an intro the introduction to the whole topic of linear transformations and isomorphisms on vector spaces. So let's get started. Um, so uh, let me recall what a vector space was very quickly, a non-empty set with two operations and addition and a scalar multiplication that satisfy those operations satisfy certain rules. So if we have certain rules for addition, we have certain rules for scalar multiplication. And if those are satisfied, then we say that uh, the set V together with that addition and scalar multiplication is a vector space. The point is that a vector space is an abstract object where we don't know what the elements are. We don't even, but we all we know is that there is a way of adding the two elements. And if you add two elements, you get something else in that set. And if you multiply an element by a scalar, you get also something um, in that set. And those rule, those, those addition and scalar multiplication follow certain rules. Scalars for first time listeners is, is just the real numbers. Uh, but for more experienced uh, um, the readers or, or listeners, it's, um, it can be any field. And, and I refer you to all my videos on vector spaces uh, to talk about those more. But our question today is, and this is a motivating question for introducing isomorphisms and actually more importantly, linear transformations, is that when can we think of two vector spaces the same? So, the, 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 I mean, there, there might be two vector spaces that look different. For example, it might be that you take the elements of one vector space and just keep that same vector space, same operations, same everything, except you color every element red. Of course, they haven't really changed anything as far as uh, uh, the vector space properties of that space is concerned. But we want to know whether or not vector spaces can come with disguises, that maybe two vector spaces walk through the door and we look at them and we say, well, these sound like they're different vector spaces, but they, are they really? And, and so let me make that a little bit more precise. So let's say we have two vector spaces over R. The over R means that the scalars are real numbers, um, although the scalars, again, could have been from any field. We are interested in knowing, can I translate every linear algebra questions from the question from the vector space V to one about W, answer the question in W, and then translate back. If that we can do that, and if always we get the correct answer, then we want to think about the two vector spaces as being the same. So let me say that one more time. So we have two vector spaces. They might look very different than each other. But could it be that if you ask me a question about vector space V, I could translate that question to vector space W, answer it over there, and then translate back the, the, the answer to the first vector space and have my answer. And, 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 I, and if I can always do that, then I want to think of these two vector spaces as the same as far as linear algebra is concerned. Um, linear algebra is all only about addition and scalar multiplications. So those questions have to be things about linear, linear uh, about scalar multiplication and addition. So it could be questions like, is this vector a linear combination of those two other vectors? What is the dimension of this subspace? Those are linear algebra questions. Does this set of vectors span this particular subspace? That's a linear algebra question. Can I take that question, translate it to another vector, to this other particular vector space, get the answer and translate back? If I can do that always and always get the same answer, then these two worlds, the world of V and the world of W are really not that different as far as linear algebra is concerned. And we want to consider them the same. Why would we want to do this? Well, because some vector spaces, like for example, Rn, are much easier to deal with in terms of computations. We can do, uh, we can answer questions a lot quicker um, and with computing in there than other ones. And we would like to have a, we want to be able to do that. If we can, if we can translate things to Rn, uh, and that, that would be helpful. Okay, so, so the first question is that, what do we mean by translate? How do I translate from one vector space to another? The translation comes with a function, with a map, a map from V to W. And this is going to be a precise translation. It's not going to be the translation like we do in languages where there's ambiguity and, and what word might mean this or might mean that and might depend on the context and so on. We want a precise definition. We want to be able to take anything in V and translate it to W. For that reason, we want the map to be one-to-one -one and onto. If you don't know what those things are, watch my videos on functions and one-to-one -one and onto functions, just general um, videos on, on, on uh, functions on any sets, 
including vector spaces, but not um, only vector spaces. So we want the function to be one to one and on to, what does that mean? That means that we want to pair the elements of V and W so that I know that if, if you're talking to about this particular element of V, my translation is this one particular element of W always and only that one. Um, and, I, and, and I want the map to be one to one onto among other things so that it has an inverse. A map has a, a map has an inverse if and only it's one to one and onto. Watch my videos on inverses of maps. And um, and if it's one to one and onto, it has an inverse. I will be able to translate back. So the elements of V and W are paired, and I know it, this element of V is matches that element of W. So whenever I'm talking about this element of V, instead I can talk about that element of W. But that's not enough because this doesn't say anything about how things add or, or scalar multiplication. This just says that the two V and W have the same cardinality. Okay, so what else do I want? So what I wanna know is the following. So let's say I have a vector V1 in V. So V1 is sitting there in V and well, you can find T of V1. T of V1 is over here and in W. You, there can be another vector V2 in V and that also has an image T of V2 um, over in W. So far so good. We just have a map and because it's one to one and on to, if V1 and V2 are distinct elements, T of V1 and T of V2 will be distinct elements. So what? But this is a vector space. So in V, I can actually add V1 plus V2. And the question is that, am I allowed to send V1 to V2, V1 plus V2 anywhere that I want to or not? And the answer is no. If V1 plus V2 add up and give you V1 plus V2, then T of V1 and T of V2, their sum should be the thing that V1 plus V2 goes to. So if you, in, in, in a vector space situation, if you want to preserve um, all the properties of uh, addition, addition, um, then this is what you want. If V1 goes to T someplace, you're fine with that. If you do go someplace, you're fine with that. But then V1 plus V2 is, is not free to go anywhere it wants. It needs to go to the sum of those things. Now V1 plus V2, if we didn't know that, we would say, well, it goes to T of V1 plus V2. But what I'm saying is that I want T of V1 plus V2 to actually be T of V1 plus T of V2. So what I need is for all V1 and V2 in V to have the, the upside down A, A means for all, for all V1 and V2 in V, I want T of V1 plus V2, where V1 plus V2 is going, to be T of V1 plus T of V2. V1 plus V2 should go, T of V1 plus V2 should be equal to um, where V1 went, T of V1, plus where V2 went, T of V2. That this is a property I want. And I want a similar property for a scalar multiplication. So if V went somewhere, if V went to T of V, then alpha V, alpha V can't go anywhere it likes. It has to go to alpha times T of V. And this should be true for every V in V and for all um, alpha in, in the reals or alpha in the field of scalars of the vector space. So this is the condition we want. So let me just define that and give a name to it. So V and W are vector spaces. T from V to W is a map, a function. Assume that the map is one to one and onto, and it has these two other properties. T of V1 plus V2 is T of V1 plus T of V2, and T of alpha V is alpha T of V for all, all, all vectors V, V1, V2 in V, and all scalars alpha. These are sort of called linearity conditions. Um, so if we have that, then we say that T is an isomorphism. Um, so this is what we mean by that translation. So the precise word for it is isomorphism. We like to make new words because we like to sound smart. And, but we also want to be precise. So and, and definitions in mathematics mean a lot. And so an isomorphism is a function, a vector space isomorphism is a function between two vector spaces that satisfies these properties. There's other kinds of isomorphisms be, between different kinds of, objects. Uh, so so this is a vector space isomorphism, but because because the context here is that we're only talking about vector spaces, I'm only call it, saying isomorphism and dropping um, the adjective vector space isomorphism. And and if there if you can find an isomorphism from V to W, again, the way I'm thinking about it, the intuitive way I'm thinking about it is that I, I, you found me a translation from V to W that's one to one onto so I can translate back and everything, then I will say that V and W are isomorphic. Uh, so, uh, so that's instead of saying that I'm thinking of them as far as linear algebra are concerned as being the same. And I denote that with V isomorphic to W. So that's the symbol. The symbol is an equal sign with a squiggly line on top. 
V is isomorphic to W. And again, uh, in linear algebra, isomorphic, isomorphic vector spaces are considered the same. They're, they're, they might look very different. There might be other things you can do with them that are not linear algebra, things that you would do in linear algebra. But as far as linear algebra is concerned, there's no property that one has that the other does not have. So let me give you a quick example. Let V be P2R, polynomials of degree no more, no more than two. So polynomials of degree less than, or, less than or equal to two plus the zero polynomial. And W be R3, the usual three-dimensional space. And I'm going to define a map for you from P to R, the polynomials of degree less than or equal to two, to R3 by sending, here's a typical element a polynomial, A plus BX plus CX squared. This is a typical polynomial, and I send it to ABC, sort of a straightforward map. And, um, and this map is one to one and on to two different polynomials. If you, if you change A, B, or C, the result will be different. And, and so the map is one to one, and it's on to because any A, B, C that you give me in R3, I know exactly from which polynomial it comes. It's, this also preserves addition and scalar multiplication. The property of that T of V1 plus V2 is T of V1 plus T of V2. We call that preserving addition. And the other one, we call it scalar multiplication. And that's true here also. That needs a little bit of a calculation. And you can do that and then check that. Or watch our uh, future videos on, on isomorphisms that, that are coming up later. Uh, we will study, um, um, we will get to these examples. We will, in the next video, we will have plenty of examples and we'll go through the calculations. So this T is an isomorphism and it says that the polynomial of degree less than or equal to two are an isomorphic copy, uh, isomorphic to R3. R3 and P2R, even though they look very different, one is polynomials, one is three tuples as vector spaces, as objects in linear algebra, they're the same. Now, um, in polynomials, you can do different th other things that you couldn't do in R3. For example, if you take two polynomials of degree two, you could multiply them and get a polynomial of degree four. But that's not a linear algebra operation. In particular, when you take those two polynomials, multiply them, you get a polynomial of degree four, which is not uh, inside V. But, in, uh, but, but we, for example, you could take two polynomials of degree one and multiply them, and, and you still would get a polynomial of degree two, and that would be fine. But in R3, we don't have a similar thing. We don't have a way of multiplying things and getting other things. So there are there are things, or, or, or in polynomials, you could take their derivative, but, but in R3, you cannot. So there are things you can do in P2R that you can't do in R3. It's not like they're identical worlds, mathematical worlds, but the linear, as the vector spaces, they're isomorphic. So um, as long as you're focusing on addition and scalar multiplication, they are actually isomorphic. Now, and isomorphism needs to be um, preserve addition and the scalar multiplication and be one to one and on to. We have studied one to one and on to-ness um, on its own when we talked about cardinality and when we talked about bijections. But but now but, but what tends to be very fruitful is to forget about one to one and on to-ness and just focus on maps that preserve addition and um, scalar multiplication. So let me define that and then say a word about it. So V and W are vector spaces. Let's say you have a map from V to W. This map might not be an isomorphism, but let's say, but we call it a linear transformation. And that's a very crucial and central topic in linear algebra. If T of V1 plus V2 is T of V1 plus V2, uh, T of V2, and T of alpha V is alpha T of V for all vectors in V and all scalars alpha. So these are two properties that an isomorphism had, but the thing it doesn't necessarily have, it could have be one to one and on to, but we don't really care about that is those. So a linear transformation is an isomorphism without necessarily um, assuming that uh, it's one-to-one -one and onto. If um, um, if V and W are actually the same, and um, um, and if for linear transformations it makes sense to have that, um, then we also have used the word linear operator sometimes for linear transformations that go from V to V. So there are sort of different ways of moving elements of V inside V. Now, an isomorphism is a one-to-one -one onto linear transformation. Now, as I said, linear transformation are a, a key concept in linear algebra, and we will spend some time trying to understand them. And after we do that, we will come back to isomorphisms and, and talk about them more. In fact, here are some of the um, videos that, that are coming up. So when are two vector spaces the same? That's this video. Um, right after this, there will be another one on linear transformations where we'll repeat the definition, but give many examples. 
Then we'll have one on basic properties of linear transformations. Then we talked about the image and the kernel, whatever that is of a linear transformations and matrix transformations, the rank knowledge theorem. Then we come back to isomorphisms and, uh, and um, talk about, come back all the way to, to this notion of how many different vector spaces are there. And there will be more things. Linear transformations will be with us from here on. Um, this is the end of this lecture. Um, if you are interested in more lectures in um, on undergraduate mathematics, subscribe to my channel. If you like this one, uh, like it. Otherwise, don't. And I will see you in the next lecture.